of my message is remember and go. Say that with me. Remember and go. All right, so God is faithful, and he wants us to remember his faithfulness. But he doesn't want us just to stay there. He wants us to go. Say go. We are going into 2023, and we are going in prepared. We're going in as salt and as light to bring the glory of the Lord to the earth. Amen? All right, so we're going to take a look at what happens in Joshua chapter 4. You guys know the story of Joshua. He was the one that um, was appointed by the Lord after Moses died, and he was the one who actually had the great honor of taking the Israelites into the promised land. This is a big deal, guys. This is something that, you know, the Lord, he always tells his people to remember this. Remember when he took us out of Egypt and he brought us into the place of the promised land where we could worship him freely. Amen. All right. So we're going to start with Joshua 3, chap, um, Joshua chapter 3, verse 17, because it leads right into chapter 4. All right. This is phase one. There's three phases, actually four phases. We're going to go through phase one right now. It says this. It says, meanwhile, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Meanwhile, the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Lord's Covenant stood on dry ground in the middle of the riverbed as the people passed by. They waited there until the whole nation of Israel had crossed the Jordan on dry ground. Amen. Come on, this is a miracle, right? All right, so listen to this. It doesn't stop there. This is what I felt like the Lord wanted to release over us tonight, is that this is just the beginning. We've seen the miracles. We've seen the glory of the Lord. We've seen the awesomeness of who God is, but this is just the beginning. So here they go. We see this huge miracle. Um, we're going to go into chapter 4. Here we go. When all the people had crossed the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Now choose 12 men, one from each tribe. Tell them, take 12 stones from the very place where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan. Carry them out and pile them up at the place where you will camp tonight. So Joshua called the 12 men he chosen, one from each of the tribes of Israel. He told them, go into the middle of the Jordan in front of the ark of the Lord your God. Each of you must pick up one stone and carry it on your shoulder, 12 stones in all, one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. We will use these stones to build a memorial. In the future, your children will ask you, what do these stones mean? You can tell them. They remind us that the Jordan stopped flowing when the ark of the Lord's covenant went across. These stones will stand as a memorial among the people of Israel forever. Now, here's, here's what I believe the Lord wants us to take from this little passage. And that is that Joshua commanded the men from each family. This is for your family. This is about your tribe. This is about your family. This is about your lineage. You're going to go to the middle of the testimony, the middle of the river, the middle right in front of the presence of God where God did that thing and you saw it change. For some of you, it was tonight. For some of you, it was last week. For some of you, it was last year. There is a time that you remember right in the middle, God shifted it in his presence presence and everything was changed. You're going to go back to that spot and you're going to say, I grab a hold of that and I testify of the goodness of God right here before the altar of the Lord, before the presence of God. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to remember that my God is faithful. Say, God is faithful. All right, so I'm hoping the Holy Spirit, we just ask Holy Spirit, you would stir it up inside of us, the testimony that you want each one of us to remember tonight before we go into 2023. All right, let's go on to verse, um, chapter, uh, verse 8. So the men did as Joshua had commanded them. They took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan River, one for each tribe. Just as the Lord had told Joshua, they carried them to the place where they were camped for the night and constructed the memorial there. Joshua also set up another pile of 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan at the place where the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant were standing. And, there they, and they are there to this day. All right, so what we see is that Joshua obeyed the Lord. Not only did he obey the Lord, but he told the people what to do, and the people obeyed Joshua. God is telling us this night that it's time to fast and it's time to pray. He gave that word to Apostle Kathy. He gave that word to Pastor James. He's probably given that word to many of you in this room. Like it is time, 
It is game on. It is a time to go. It is a time to buckle down. It is time to take this seriously because the glory of the Lord is coming in full measure in a whole other way that we haven't seen yet. And we've seen a lot. We just testified about everything that we've seen. But God has so much more, just like he did for the Israelites. He had so much more. If you remember in Joshua chapter 4, a couple chapters later, they come to this city called Jericho. And what happens at Jericho? They march around seven times or six times or seven times, and they make a loud sound. And what happens? The walls come tumbling down. Had they seen that before? They had never seen that before. The glory of the Lord is coming in a measure that we have not seen before. Amen? And the Lord is saying to us, he's saying, I want you to remember I want you to remember the glory. I want you to remember the manna. I want you to remember the miracles and the signs and wonders that were in the wilderness. But I am taking you to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. You are crossing over, and I am preparing you for the goodness of the Lord, for the promise to come to fruition. Amen? All right, so here's what happens in here. They take, they listen, and they obey. They obey the Lord. They obey the leader. They obey Joshua. And then it says, the priests who were carrying the ark, this is verse 10, stood in the middle of the river until all the commands that Moses had given Joshua were carried out. Meanwhile, the people hurried across the riverbed. And when everyone was safely on the other side, the priests crossed over with the ark of the Lord as the people watched. I, I felt like the Lord wanted us to really take, grab a hold of this, is that when the miracle happened, the, the presence of the Lord, the Ark of the Covenant, you could see the presence of God because it was carried in an ark. And the people watched. The Lord wants us, Pastor James, you talked about vision tonight. The Lord wants us to see. He wants us to see the glory of the Lord. He wants us to know where his presence is. He wants us to follow his light. He wants to guide us to where to stand. He wants to guide us on how to worship. He wants to guide us on where to go. And he's like, I want you to open your eyes to see in this new season. Who's ready for that? Who's ready for open eyes? Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you are opening our eyes, and then we will watch, and we will see your glory, your presence. We will know exactly where to go and how to do it in Jesus' name. All right, so then it says, we're going to read a little bit more, okay? Then it says, the armed warriors from the tribe, I love this part, you guys, verse 12. The armed warriors from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh led the Israelites across the Jordan, just as Moses had directed. These armed men, about 40,000 strong, were ready for battle, and the Lord was with them, and they crossed over to the plains of Jericho. Come on. The army, there's an army rising up. And the army is going across, and they are ready for battle. We are prepared because the Lord is preparing us. Verse 14, that day the Lord made Joshua a great leader in the eyes of all the Israelites. And for the rest of his life, they revered him as much as they had revered Moses. See, Joshua took over. He was coming into this place of leadership. Remember, Moses is the one who was with them in the wilderness the whole time, right? And here there's a changing of the guard. I believe the Lord is doing a major shift. And this is for the church at whole. There's going to be a changing. We're going to see a changing. And we're going to see, we're going to have to like be, okay, Lord, help us to have that increased discernment that Pastor James was talking about. Because we're going to see things. We're going to see kingdoms fall. We're going to see the kingdom of the Lord come into fruition. But in that, the Lord is saying, I want you to stay steadfast. I want you to know the Joshua's in the land. I want you to know who you're supposed to listen to. Because God is with leaders in this place. And there are some leaders who profess that they know God, but that God is not with them. And God is saying, I'm going to make it abundantly clear for you to know who to follow, who to listen to, what to say on your social media, on all of the things that come in and to and fro in the, in the highways and the byways of communication. Because the Father is revealing and making all things clear. Amen. And we're going to revere people. We're going to see the glory of the Lord like we see at House of Glory. You can't make this stuff up. Pastor James and I have this thing, and we're like, 
oh my gosh, you can't make this up. Like, this is God. There's no denying. Are you guys with me? There is no, uh, my eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. Amen. And there's no denying. And God is saying, you need to be aware because God is going to elevate people. And he's going to do that because his glory is in that place. And we are his chosen people to carry his glory. Amen. All right, this is serious because they're going into the Jordan. So phase one, they saw the miracle. Phase two, they're obeying the Lord, the word of the Lord that came through their leader, that came directly from God to remember and to go get those stones out of the middle of this river that's dried up. Think about that for a minute. They had to go back to a place to go grab it where the the presence of God is there. Okay, so here we go. This is verse 15. The Lord has said to Joshua, Oh, wait, hold on. We go to 19. The people crossed. This is really awesome, you guys. Hold on. It says, oh, wait, I got to read this one. 15, sorry. The Lord has said to Joshua, command the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant to come up out of the riverbed. So Joshua gave the command. As soon as the priest carrying the Ark of the Lord's Covenant came up out of the riverbed and their feet were on high ground, the water of the Jordan returned and overflowed its banks as before completion of the miracle so I felt like the Lord was saying we've seen the glory of the Lord we've seen so much happen the testimonies we're not we're 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 sensitive to that but the Lord is saying I'm going to show you so much more not only am I going to heal people but they're going to sustain their healing like never before because the waters came back over and the the river was flowing hard again See, God brought them through on dry ground, and that's amazing. And we testify about him bringing us through on dry ground. But we got to see the fullness and the completion of the glory of the Lord when the riverbanks overflowed again. Amen? There's more. I believe the Lord wants to show us so much more. Verse 19, this is the part I was excited about. The people crossed the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month. It was a new year for them. I don't know if you guys know this, on the Jewish calendar, they have four times, so they have a new year. One that we celebrate, a lot of people celebrate is Rosh Hashanah, and that happens during harvest time. But the one that the Lord established with Moses was the Passover. And this is where we're at right now in the new year. Right now, we're, co- we're in a new year, right? Well, we're not in Passover, but according to our calendar, we're going into a new year. And it says on the 10th day of this new year, I'm here to tell you tonight that when the Lord gave me Joshua chapter 4, I had no idea it was happening. The crossing of the Jordan was in a new year. Amen. So the Lord is here to tell us tonight. He wants us to remember the testimony of who he is because he had them go grab those rocks, you know. And then he's saying, because it's a new year and I'm taking you a new place and I'm going to take you to a promised land where you're going to take down the giants. The walls are going to fall. The chains are going to break, and you're going to see the glory of the Lord like you've never seen it before in 2023. Amen? So it's a new year. Now, we're going to end right here. It says, then Joshua said to the Israelites, this is phase three. Then Joshua said to the Israelites, in the future, your children will ask, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them, this is where the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the river right before your eyes, and he kept it dry until you were all across, just as he did at the Red Sea when he dried it up until we all crossed over. He did this so all the nations of the earth might know that the Lord's hand is powerful, and he, his great great and mighty arm, the Lord... Oh, I took my glasses off too fast. <laughs> and so his, you, so you might fear the Lord, your God, forever. Okay. Wow. This is not just about you. This is not just about your family, but it's about generations to come. This new year that we're stepping into, God is saying to us, we're going to see the glory of the Lord. We need to testify. We need to write it down. We need to memorialize what he's done, his faithfulness on a rock. I have rocks for you because I believe tonight 
Holy Spirit's going to stir up for you the testimony of what he's done in 2022. But if you notice, it wasn't just about the Jordan, what he did right there. It was about what happened when Moses, God showed up, and they went through the Red Sea. So I'm here to tell you that was a different generation. We have Moses, and then we have the new generation of Joshua. But tonight, the Lord is saying, what has God done for you? What has he done for your mother? What has he done for your grandmother, for your grandfather, for your great grandparents. The Lord's here to tell you tonight, there is equity in every family line. There is someone in the family that's been praying for you. There's someone who you know, who you may not know. They knew God and they testified and they stood on holy ground for their generation. And you are an answer to their prayer from generations past. And the Lord wants to remind you tonight that when you testify and you hold up like we did tonight, his faithfulness in your family line, that this is not just about you, but it's about generations to come because they will ask you, what does that stone mean? And you're going to say, that's when God saved me. That's when God healed me. That's when God redeemed me. That's when God picked me up and he turned me around and he put my feet on solid ground. That's when God showed me that I'm above and I'm not beneath. That's when I realized the enemy was under my feet. Because you see here in the Old Testament, they walked through the water. But when we go to the New Testament, we see that Jesus is talking to Peter. And Peter's like, God, if that's really you. Because see, Peter had some doubt. He wasn't really sure. He says, if that's really you, tell me to come to you. And guess what Jesus does? He goes, I'm giving you an invitation. Come walk on the water with me. The storm is under your feet. You don't have to go through. I'm putting you above. So in 2023, I believe the Lord as we remember that he's going to bring us above. Yes, we will go through. We will be above. It's all of it because we're in the new covenant. Amen. So here's what's happening. I believe God wants us to grab a hold of the testimony. What has happened? What has happened to you? When did he come into your life? And what did he do for you this year? And I want you to write it down. So I have some rocks for you. So we're going to pass these out. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to leave them out because we're going to be here for a while. So I'm going to put some on this side. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're going to pass these out. I want everyone to grab a rock. And then I have some Sharpie pens um, that I brought with me. And I want you right now, let's just pray and ask Holy Spirit because phase three is to remember to write it down to tell the next generation. And phase four is to go. So they didn't stop there at camp. You know, they prepared themselves. A little bit later, the story goes in, in chapter 5, they had to all be circumcised. They had to prepare themselves to go into the promised land. There's a preparation that we've been talking about tonight. There is um, a, some diligence. There's some obedience that's happening in this place tonight that the Father is revealing to you because God is preparing us for what's to come because his glory We've been talking about and we've seen, but there's so much more. There is so much more that he wants to release over us. The fullness of the testimony of who he is, but there's so much more. Who's ready for more? And as we step into this new year, I really felt like the Lord wanted us to remember by grabbing a stone, just like they did in this story in chapter 4, the account of Joshua and crossing of the Jordan. What's the testimony? that you want to testify to your children and your children's children and their children, to your neighbor's children and their children, to the people in this room, to the kids that we see in the other room. What do you want to testify? What do you, how do you want to, to tell them about who God is and his faithfulness? So, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would stir it up, Lord. And um, I have pens for you. We'll grab those in a little bit. But I just want – I don't have enough for everybody, so I just have some to pass out. But – I want you to start up. You can do it any time tonight to write that testimony down. And so that, that testimony is going to be your witness because you're an eyewitness to the glory of the Lord and you've seen his glory. You're going to testify, remember and testify, and then you're ready to go because God has so much more. Oh, Holy Spirit, we just thank you for the more. We say thank you, thank you, God, for what you've done. And we wait with great expectancy for the more. Just like you had for the Israelites as they crossed over and they entered in to take the territory. 
I thank you, Father, that you're giving us territory. I thank you, Lord, that chains are being broken. I thank you, Lord, that there's freedom to be who you've called us to be. Lord, freedom to stand for righteousness. Lord, freedom to declare the truth about who you are, for you are the way, the truth, and the life. And we thank you, God, that you made a way for the Israelites through the Red Sea. You made a way for them through the Jordan. You made a way for Peter to walk on water. We thank you, Father, that your way is to the Father. And, Lord, we can see you and know you and recognize your glory. So, Lord, we just thank you for the testimony. And we thank you, God, for catapulting us into 2023. In Jesus' name, amen.